This year, I decided to grow some catnip for my cats because you know what? Us humans, we have a nice plant that we get to chill with, but what about our cats? They need a little fun time too. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to grow some catnip for your cats and a few different fun facts in order for you to grow some really good, healthy catnip yourself. Let's go. What's going on my plant peoples? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, houseplants, and humor as a much needed form of mental health therapy, sobriety, learning how to navigate this crazy ass world we live in with ADHD and also healthy living. But also, you know what? Our cats need some fun too, and guess what? I decided to grow some catnip this year. For the most part, humans do not consume catnip. I know there are a few people out here and a few articles that say that, yeah, it's okay for humans to consume catnip in small quantities. However, me, personally, I would not do it at all. However, that would not stop me from growing some catnip for my cats because my cats are jerk-offs and they need to chill the heck out. And I already know that catnip will help sedate them. But fun fact number one, not all cats react the same way to catnip. It, the, you know, some cats will develop some nausea and vomiting from it. However, my cats are not like that and it just sedates them and it gets them a little crazy eyed. Fact number two about catnip is that they are perennial. So, and I'm in over here in zone 6A, 6A B border. And I know that my catnip will grow again back next year. I do have a catnip outside. I am gonna try it out and see how well, if it's gonna come back next year or not. I do have it covered in a protective uh, covering for the winter time. So I have a feeling that it will come back next year. But inside of the greenhouse, it's gonna most likely grow most of the year. If not, you know, all the whole time. Fun fact number three about catnip is that they are drought tolerant. Once the plant is established, that sucker does not need water like that. It loves like a nice dry environment. So if you forget to water this, for you know all you people that like to forget about watering, because you know I am guilty of that too, it's all good because it can definitely tolerate a good old drought. You do need to water it, of course, just like any other herb that you have in your plant. You're gonna be treating it like you would a rosemary. Rosemary does not like a lot of watery, you know, water ground, watery ground, soggy ground. This needs a lot of drainage, okay? So that means that no water pools or anything like that because it will develop root rot and it will die. However, when it is time to water it, you wanna you know, thoroughly soak the area and just let it dry out. You can actually like kind of like totally forget about it and it's all good. This is one of the things I kind of love about this too because sometimes I forget as well and this sucker's still alive and I'm like, y'all right. You're doing all right. Fact number four is that yes, it does like a lot, a lot of drainage because it does not like wet, soggy feet, which brings me to it can love, you know, it grows well in containers. So if you don't have an outdoor backyard or anything like that, you can definitely grow this in containers, but you have to make sure that it has well draining soil. It does not like soggy feet at all. So make sure that it's got a bunch of holes in the bottom so that water can seep right on out and also make sure that you have a lot of drainage using perlite inside of your containers. But in the ground, you're good to go. But isn't this crazy? It's so versatile, not only in the ground, but also in containers. This is fantastic. Which brings me to fact number five, is that this sucker spreads. So if you do have it in a container, that's great because you already know that that is not gonna spread at all. However, if you do have it in the ground like I do, it can take over. I believe it's in the mint family, so it can spread. It's not exactly invasive, but you do gotta keep this plant in check because if not, it will kind of spread all over your area, which is not too bad because if you're constantly um, snipping it and pruning it so you can bring it in for your cat so they can like have a crazy old good time, then you should be good to go. I forget what number we're on. We could be on five, who really knows? But all I know is that this plant is easy to propagate. All you gotta do is take a little snip of this plant, take off the bottom leaves, stick it in some water, and within a week or so, you will start to develop some roots inside of that water, you know, little container. Make sure to constantly change out the water because the water can get a little yucky and slimy and just smell bad. So once you, you know, keep replacing that water just so it, the water can stay nice and fresh, that sucker will start to develop fruits. Now, when you are doing that and you are putting it in the water, you know, you can add a little bit of hormone. I mean, you could add it, but it's not really necessary though. I have added a little bit of hormone powder inside of the liquid and, you know, inside of the water. It's not absolutely necessary because this sucker propagates so easily that you wouldn't even need that. Another way of propagating this, which is actually called um, through division. So you can actually dig up part of this plant and like kind of separate the roots. I wouldn't even dig up this entire plant at all. I would just go and take a shovel and just kind of cut right through that plant, you know, the plant base and just get a little bit of the root system and then it will be good to go. This plant is definitely hardy. Which brings me to the next one. This sucker can grow anywhere. 
it's like it's like a weed it can grow legit anywhere you want to if you got poor soil it'll grow if you got good soil it'll grow if you got fertilized soil it'll grow even better but if you don't it'll still grow this sucker can grow absolutely anywhere in any conditions so long as you have a nice well draining area no soggy you know soggy water from like i said before then you really are good to go. I know I mentioned it before about this being a spreader plant that it can really spread and kind of take over a little bit. That brings me to the next one, which is it starts to flower and it flowers spring, summer, and fall. Okay, it doesn't have one specific set season in the gardening, you know, in the gardening season to flower. It will flower all the time. So if you don't want this sucker spreading even further, then you're going to have to prevent those little white flowers from, you know, just even showing up. So whenever you see white flowers, chop them things off and then you're good to go. But remember, if you do see white flowers and you don't mind the spread of catnip, then you could be all right. But there are cute, you know, some little small white flowers. They are pretty, oh, but they will spread. I'm just warning you right now. The fun thing about this is also is that the pH doesn't even matter about the soil because this one can grow damn near anywhere, which is great. This has a wide range of acceptable pH levels. It can grow like from a very uh, acidic soil, like maybe about 6, uh, 6.3, 6.5, all the way up to like a 7.5, which is kind of wild because it has such a large wide range of it. Now this next one, I thought it was quite interesting because some people will use this method. I did not use this method and it managed to grow. And that's called stratification. This plant, some people say that it will grow better if you give it, you know, the seeds a cold period. So maybe for about a few weeks, you would stick it in your refrigerator, let it, you know, give it that cold period. You can even throw the seeds outside in the cold, give it a little while, and then you can start to germinate those seeds. I didn't do that. I'm not gonna lie, I did not do that. And I wound up growing some catnip. The only thing is that if you do not stratify it, you may have to, ha you know, you may encounter a hard time trying to get this uh, seed to germinate. Remember, when it comes to all type of germination of your seeds, you're going to need a nice humid environment, a nice wet environment, and also um, some good grow lights. So, you know, it all depends on how much stratification or if you're gonna remember or not. But just know that if you don't do it, you may struggle a little bit, but you may very well still get it because I got some and it worked out pretty darn good. Speaking of cold stratification, once this plant is matured up, it can definitely take a beating of the cold. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, this thing was like what, in the 40s outside and this was still growing pretty darn good. I mean, it even dropped down into like the late 20s and it was still surviving. I could not believe it. I said, yo, you can take a good beating, you know, good beating of the cold, which brings me to this is not like very, very hot temperature climates. So if you're in an area above like 80 degrees and up, you may have a hard time. Maybe 85 is like the max cutoff but it does not like to grow in high, high heat. It just doesn't like it. It likes a cooler environment. And if you wanna really push your boundaries, test those limits, like you already know, I like to do that, then you can grow this even cooler. And as you can see right now in my greenhouse, it is like, what, 48 degrees? It drops and, you know, it drops inside of this greenhouse at least to freezing and is still alive and it still looks great. But the downside, yes, there is a downside to growing catnip. This does not have many pests at all. So if it's in the middle of the summer, you're probably not gonna see a lot of bugs on this plant, which is pretty cool. But if it's definitely one bug that I have seen and it's on it right now, it's aphids. There are aphids all up on this plant right now as we speak. So before I even give it to my cats, I will just spray it down with a bunch of neem oil spray mix, whatever type of organic pesticide, I'm hoping that you're using organic, that you're gonna be spraying this plant down or just uh, whatever cutting that you're gonna have, rinse it off, you know, rinse it off before you decide to give it to your cat. All right, I really hope you enjoyed this video and you got some good information out of it. Now let me know down in the comments below, do you got cats? Do you grow catnip just for your cats? Do you consume it for yourself or do you not consume it for yourself? I just grow this just for my cats. And I know my cats are gonna enjoy the heck out of it. They love playing with this stuff so much. I love to dry it and I put it on their little cat tower and let them go crazy with it. Sometimes I even just dangle the fresh catnip right in front of them and they start to like chew on the plant and everything. It's so cute to see them have a good time. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to smash that like button. I really appreciate it. Also, you can catch me on Facebook, Instagram, and on TikTok. TikTok is strictly mental health though. There is nothing gardening related, but Facebook, 
and Instagram is uh, definitely plant related. Until the next episode, you guys, where you and me both are going to be growing our happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time. God bless you all. And I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Peace and love.